US President Donald Trump once famously quoted that one of the key problems today is that politics is such a disgrace. Good people don't go into government. How right he was. The US president's campaign trail led him across the US with a promise of making America great again. Yet, almost four years on, and Trump's string of false promises and deceit have caught up with him and expose him for the man that he really is. When Trump promised to end endless wars, many believed that he would be the president to lead the US troops out of harm's way and back home onto the shores of the US. However, since Trump took office, there are now more troops deployed in the military than ever before. With in excess of 1.3 million active personnel at his disposal, Trump has deployed over 200,000 of these soldiers abroad. The question must then be raised as to why Trump insists on sending troops around the world when his entire rhetoric was to bring them home. As things stand, the US has troops in many countries across the globe. Some of the leading figures have troops in the tens of thousands, all of whom who cost money to maintain and no doubt have significant consequences on the US taxpayer as they fork out ever-increasing military budgets. Um, yeah, the U.S. large military and military presence is a great danger to the rest of the world. Um, uh, not only are there um, many people in uniform, but the U.S. has uh, 800 foreign, foreign bases located around the world. Um, this means that the U.S. is a hegemon, is an empire, despite any uh, protestations to the contrary. Uh, this means the U.S. can be a bully and can commit, easily commit acts of aggression against other nations. Even though Trump has broken his promises, he's made things even worse in the fact that in spite of being told his troops are no longer welcome in a particular country, he ignores requests and refuses to withdraw his troops. But Trump's justifications for war are clear. Conflict makes money, and with his so-called beautiful weapons ready to kill, he should be punished for his actions, unless, of course, the killing is done in large numbers and to the sound of trumpets. The cost of human life does not appear to have any emotional factor on Donald Trump. More than 2,400 US soldiers died in 2019, with countless others injured or wounded. The deployment of troops by the US also has a life factor consequence on those who once upon a time took an oath to serve their country. The psychological aspects of serving abroad, the desire to spend time with their families and the traumatic stress all add up to another version of costs. Yet Trump, the so-called businessman, appears to have left his business credentials back in his previous office. With Trump's inability to consider cost-saving measures, its incompetence in dealing with fraud and its ever-lowering bow to the defence contractors who overcharge the US government at an exorbitant rate. Uh, the military-industrial complex is a major uh, economic and political force in this country. Uh, weapons manufacturers uh, yield, uh, wield a, a great deal of power, and uh, they give money to uh, politicians for their campaigns, so it's, it's, uh, it's difficult to stop them, and we can't talk about war and peace if we don't talk about the huge sums of money that they get from, uh, from the government. Uh, about 60% of the United States budget goes to the military, goes to these defense contractors like uh, Raytheon and McDonnell Douglas and whomever else. Uh, and when you're in the city of Washington, you actually see their adver they advertise in uh, the subway system and, and elsewhere. It's rather odd to see, but it's a clear statement that they that the Washington, D.C. is a company town and the company is uh, all about various forms of capital and about the defense industry in particular. Trump is first and foremost a businessman, and let there be no doubt, he has one eye on his pocket in every action he takes. The deals with the Saudi regime of Ben Salman have seen the US sign accords in the region of $400 billion. One must then legitimately raise the question as to what was in it for Trump's industries. The pressure's now on Trump and his loyal pawns. 
with the consequences of his illegal, murderous action against the people's martyr, Lieutenant General Soleimani, the US welcome in West Asia has been outstayed, and warnings have been delivered across the board that unless the US troops don't leave vertically, they will be leaving horizontally. However, with Trump eyeing NATO to supposedly replace the US presence in the area, just take one moment to consider that the US is the NATO's biggest contributor of personnel, power and money. So if anything, all that will change is the colour of the flag as Trump continues his conquest across the globe.